Okay, I'm just going to briefly describe here why x equals negative b over 2a gives you the x-coordinate of the vertex. We know from the quadratic formula we can get our two x-intercepts. So x-intercept number 1 is negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And the second x-intercept, x2, is equal to negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. We know that for a parabola, if we know where the two x-intercepts are, the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to happen smack dab in the middle, in the midpoint of those two x-values. To get that midpoint, if we add those two things together and then divide that answer by 2, we will get the x-coordinate of the vertex. So let's try that. We're going to add these two x-intercepts together and then divide them by 2. So I've got my first x-intercept. I'm going to add to that my other x-intercept. And then once we get that sum, we're going to take that sum and divide it by 2. So this looks really complicated, but it's the process that we've been using all the way through. Now on the top here, to be able to add those fractions, I just noticed I copied this down wrong, that's 2a, I already have a common denominator. So when we have a common denominator, we can just add the numerators together. So a negative b plus a negative b would be minus 2b, and then we have a plus square root of b squared minus 4ac, but then we're minusing the square root. So in essence, they end up equaling zero and that disappears. So the numerator uh, of the top ends up being negative 2b over the 2a, and then that answer has to get divided by the 2 here. So I'm going to rewrite that divide line as divide by 2. That's that piece right there. So simplifying the negative 2 divided by 2, that's really just going to end up being negative b over a. But then we still have to divide by 2. And when we divide a fraction by a fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So that's going to become times 1 over 2. And the rule for multiplying fractions together is we multiply the numerators together, the tops, negative b times 1 is just negative b, and multiply your bottoms together, or the denominators, 2 times a is 2a. So that's why that little shortcut does work. So your x-coordinate of your vertex for standard form will always be equal to negative b over 2a. All right, let's do an example or two where we're solving some problems now. All right, let's see if I can make this. Yep, there we go. All right, a cannonball is shot out of a cannon in a trench that is two meters below ground level. The height of the cannonball is given by the equation that I have there. Oh, it's not going to let me lock this. Oh, yep, there we go. Uh, and there we go. Uh, above the ground level can be approximated by this equation right here, where h is your height of your ball in meters and t is the time in seconds since being fired. How long will it take the cannonball to reach the ground level? So the how long is what we're trying to figure out. That tells us t is what we're solving for, t equals question mark. And reaching ground level means your height is zero. So let's work that in. We've got to change our h at t equaling zero and that still equals negative 5 t squared plus 35 t minus 2. So we need to solve this quadratic equation for t. It's in its standard form. We could try factoring or we can go into quadratic formula. So let's go with quadratic formula. Our t will equal negative b, so negative 35, plus or minus the square root of b, 35 squared, minus 4 times a, which is negative 5, times c, which is negative 2, all divided by 2 times the a. So we're going to end up with t being equal to negative 35 plus or minus the square root of 1,185 divided by, and 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So our two values of t, time 1, would be given by negative 35 plus the square root of 1,185 divided by negative 10. Our other time is going to be given by 
doing a subtraction. And so we can pop that into our calculator and get our two times there. All right, so I did my calculations here and I got 0 0.06, which if I round to the nearest tenth, it would be like approximately 0 0.1 seconds. So that uh, is a positive time. And the other one is about 6.9 seconds if we are looking at um, rounding to one decimal place for each of those to the nearest tenth. So what's happening here is the cannon is down in a trench, so its height, this is the ground level right here, the, the x-axis is your ground level, it's being shot out of the trench up and over into the enemy lines there. So my two values are both positive. This one here is how long will it take the cannonball to reach ground level after it is shot. So it goes up it hits ground level 0.1 second after being shot and goes up to its maximum and comes back at 6.9 seconds. So how long is the cannonball in the air to the nearest tenth of a second? It'd be in the air for 6.9 seconds. Okay, so I'll put some therefore statements with that. At this point now, we're ready to find where that maximum height is. So you have your two zeros. Um, you could find the midpoint of those and then sub that in to get the maximum height or you can use the shortcut of uh, which isn't really a shortcut now that you already know the zeros, but you could do the negative b over 2a um, to get the time that it takes to reach the maximum height and then sub that in to get the actual maximum height. So try those things and uh, then continue the video. All right, so I have some therefore statements written here. Uh, the last question I'm going to uh, do as well. I'm going to use the short, uh, the the x or the time, time being equal to the negative b over 2a. Our negative b would be negative 35 divided by 2 times negative 5. So that's going to give us a positive value out of that. And that positive value is 3.5. So it's going to reach the maximum height 3.5 seconds after it was shot. And then we're just going to sub that 3.5 into the equation for the time and solve for our time. So when we work all that out, we get the cannonball reaches a maximum height of 59.25 meters at a time of 3.5 seconds after being shot. So hopefully that makes sense for that one. All right, our last example here is the daily production cost. So a cost, revenue, profit kind of question. The cost is given by this equation, which you'll notice extended on two here, so don't forget that 650 is part of it. Cost is in dollars and T is the number of cars that's being made. How many cars must be made to minimize the production cost? So we wanna find the minimum of the function. This uh, should have had, uh, or does have a positive here, which means our parabola is opening up and it will reach a minimum for sure. So we're really looking for, as soon as we see that word minimum, we're looking for that vertex. Okay, so if you want to give this one a try, go ahead, put the video on pause, try it out. Otherwise, just keep paying attention here. Um, so how many cars must be made? So T is the number of cars. We're really looking for that X coordinate or T coordinate of the vertex here. So I'm going to use that shortcut again. The time would be negative B over 2A. So negative B, which is negative 10, divided by 2 times A, which is A being 0 0.2. So positive 10 divided by 0.4 here, which gives you an answer of 25. So 25 cars would have to be made to get the minimum. And to actually find that minimum cost, we're going to evaluate the cost at 25 cars. So 0 0.2 times 25 squared minus 10 times 25. So I'm just replacing the T with the 25 and solving for that production cost. 
and when I solve for that production cost, I get 525. So therefore, if they produce 25 cars, they will minimize their production cost at a cost of $525. So I have my therefore statement written down now. Uh, just remember when you're reading these questions, try and ask yourself, is the question asking me for the y-intercept? Is it asking me for to solve a quadratic equation of some sort? Whether it's the zeros or maybe you want to know at what times the uh, cannonball is going to have a height of 50 meters. Then you're replacing the height with 50. You're going to bring it over to one side, but you're still st solving a quadratic equation out of that. Um, or you're finding the vertex, that maximum or minimum point. So just keep those things in mind and good luck with the questions.